Hello everyone, this is Brother Lee. So today this is another fundamental tutorial so following the last tutorial in which I'm talking about the geometry proximity node. Today's topic uh, is going to talk about the capture attributes node that uh, many people are asking about or cur being curious about. So let us start. So here we're in Blender and this is a fairly easy setup that I have a cube that contains a geometry node trees. Uh, and uh, within the geometry node trees, everything I have is a set position node which I explained the last time is basically just to most of the time to set the vertex location of your geometry and there is a kind of automatic input within the position input which is done by position so this is gives essentially the same result if you plug the position or not okay and uh, what's very important with this node as I explained last time is that this node by itself that never contains any data that's also why if you take a UV sphere and you set a position as well, and let's vector mass this position, for example, translate that to maybe one unit away. And finally, let's join the geometry with join geometry nodes. Then you can realize I have both cube and uh, sphere. So how are they have different position output? from the linkage. This is because the geometry connected to the position are different. So these nodes essentially output the different data depends on which geometry is linked to. This is a very important concept because finally what determine the values is not this node but rather the socket that you're connected to. So here let's go to another node trees in which we are going to talk about the attribute capture nodes. So here within this setup, I have a cone. Uh, this cone does not contain any geometry node tree because uh, the node tree is on our cube. Uh, what I want to do with this cone, however, is I would like to instance this cone on this kind of polygon center of our cube. And the way I'm going to do that is firstly to convert, to get the points within this kind of polygon center with this matched points node. You can also distribute it to other places like the vertices, edges, and the faces. But just to know that if you are going to distribute on the vertices, then you do not need this node at all. You can directly do that steps with this instance on points. Okay. Um, but only if you are trying to really instance on the faces, then you probably would like to do. Uh, essentially, any kind of node, whether it's kind of instance to points, uh, or mesh to points, or even curve to points, they are kind of for particle or visual uh, for other specific kind of purposes, not really the, uh, not really kind of for instancing. So they are not mandatory if you try to instance something, unless in a specific kind of case that you would like to instance object on a polygon, just like what we are doing right now. Okay, but uh, and uh, here what we can also do is to bring our cube back using the joint geometry so that we have both cube and our instances so we can actually look at what's actually happening. Uh, usually when we're instancing a polygon, uh, very frequently we want all this kind of object aligned with the normal. The normal is basically perpendicular to where this kind of uh, polygon is facing. So in this case, we have this tip of our cone, right? And I want this uh, the top surface, the cone, to look at up direction, which is okay right now. But uh, for the this right side, it should go to right. On the left side, it should face on left. On the button, it should face down. Okay. So usually, if you're trying to use the distribute points, then it will automatically provide this normal output, and you can plug with align uh, ruler to vector to do this kind of rotation. Here we're not a distributed points, rather we're using mesh two points to generate uh, this kind of instance on the faces. So we can directly use the normal attributes uh, for the geometry. And if we plug this normal to vectors and the rotation to rotation, however, we find there's nothing happens. The reason is that this normal actually comes from all the way through these points because the points is essentially to use the to instance our object so the normal comes from these points but uh, these points once we use the mesh to points then they lose kind of all the data of kind of normal or tangent or whatever other stuff 
because these are really just the kind of points. Uh, usually, if you directly instance on the cube centers or the cube vertices, then it will still carry all this kind of data of these kind of normals. Okay, and let's, let's uh, switch the align ruler vector to the Z so that they are pointing outwards for the vertices. So now we know that all these kind of normals still exist for these kind of vertices or face polygons when they are not being uh, converted to points. So how can we actually, but this normal has to come from these kind of points. So how can we actually get normal from this particular state of geometry? So this is the moment that we actually need the attribute capture. So this is the first the function uh, that we commonly use the attribute capture or capture attribute. Uh, basically, the usage is pretty simple. That's you just uh, choose the domain that you want. In this case, since it's kind of a uh, we're instancing on face, so I'm going to choose the face domain, and I'm going to use the vector because normal is a vector, purple to purple socket, and the purple out to vector. And immediately, we have everything being recovered. So this is the first usage with the uh, attributes capture. Next, we are going to talk about the second function within this attribute capture. So here, let's just uh, go with a new node trees. And I'm going to delete everything we have right here. So we're going to do a little bit more graph. Basically, what I want is to have all this kind of polygon to disappear. Okay, so this is um, to shrink and disappear. So first of all, I'm going to take the split edges. And then I'm going to attribute capture the position within the vector domain and I'm going to take the position. So now I'm recording the position of each vertices at this particular geometry state. And then I'm going to do the attribute capture again with the face. And then plug the same position into the value. Note that this position at this moment is outputting different data, not because of geometry, but because I'm setting the values in a different domain. And then I'm going to set the position. As I mentioned, this set position is evaluating, or is, is essentially putting these kind of vertices into different locations. Here, let's take a, a mix RGB and mix our point position and the face position together. And then plug the position. And immediately we can see a very interesting kind of mobile graph being made by manipulating this factor. The reason is, yeah, once I'm splitting these kind of edges and I put the position into the face domain, I actually get the idea of a face center by averaging this kind of four position output. And if I'm mixing them, then all this kind of position is coming to the center. I don't know if you can actually see my attribute uh, annotation, but uh, anyway. Okay, so this is kind of idea. So this capture attribute node also serve as a function to convert attributes from one domain to the other, which may be potentially very interesting. For example, you can not only convert position from point to face, but you can also convert normal from face to point. Because normally when we are talking about the normals uh, in the spreadsheet, uh, the normal is actually in the face. It's an attribute within the face domain. So it's actually always a face normal, it's not a vertex normal. In some cases, it may cause a kind of uh, an issue, a kind of mistake and inaccuracy with in, if you're using this normal directly. So that's sometimes, sometimes maybe you want to capture attributes or maybe the system will automatically do this function with you so you do not need to care about this. But these are just the kind of possible thinkings and the potential use case with this capture attribute node. So this is all about it. So I probably, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'll probably see you next time. Bye-bye.